truth is how long it would take you to circle the earth and walk every footstep and every every mile it would take to go around the world. Oh, it's just hard to imagine. But no matter how great heaven is and no matter how great earth is, it's not greater than His Word. For His Word is what started heaven and what started earth. And He said not one jot and not one tittle of the law, which is the Word, will pass away till all be fulfilled. I believe that, that we should vote according to values. I don't believe we should vote according to political party. I believe we should look at the values of these politicians to see and get, and get what you what the best that you can do in voting. I'm going to tell you something. I, believe, I encourage all God's people to participate while you have the freedom. But I want to remind you that no matter what you do and no matter how you vote, God will hold you responsible. Amen. But His Word will come to pass. Amen. His Word will be fulfilled. The Bible tells us there's coming a great day that will change the course of history. There's coming a day that will shake the very power of heaven and the very power and the powers of earth. And I will say it'll even shake the saint's kingdom. There's coming a day that we don't know the day or the hour when this time, when this event is coming. But we know without a doubt for sure as you're sitting in this building tonight, it will come. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. For one time on the Mount of Olives when He ascended into heaven, the Bible said they stood there gazing up and two men stood by them in white array and said, why stand you here gazing into heaven for this same Jesus will so come in like manner as ye see Him go. And I tell you, those words still ring true today. He's coming back one of these days. Ready or not, He's coming back. Whether the church gets itself ready or not, whether your heart is right with God or not, with that time appointed on God's timetable. I don't believe God Terry has tarried His coming. No, no, no. But that time has been set since the very foundation of the world. And when that time comes, there's no crying going to hold it back. There's no praying going to hold it back. There's no man can hold it back. For whether if you're ready or not, Jesus Christ is coming. I wonder, are you ready tonight? Jesus is coming soon. And we say that, uh, and people will laugh and mock and say, I've heard that all my life. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you something, we're a, we're a week closer than we was last week. Uh, and you know this week may not even finish itself out. Uh, before the time ends in this service tonight, uh, Jesus could have come back. Uh, but oh, hallelujah, and take us all out of here. Uh, I'm not preaching fairy tales. Uh, I'm not preaching emotionalism. Uh, I'm preaching the very word of God. Uh, you better get yourself ready. For Jesus is coming back. Oh yeah. Amen. On that day, Jesus said, two will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the meal and one will be taken and the other left. Two will be in one bed sleeping and one will be taken and the other left. Jesus, Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, explaining this event that's about to take place. He said the Lord himself uh, shall descend from heaven with a shout, uh, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, uh, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together uh, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, and so shall we ever uh, be with the Lord in the Corinthian church. Uh, he said for this mortal uh, must put on immortality. Uh, for this corruptible uh, must put on incorruption. Amen. And so is brought to pass the same which is written. Amen. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? And no oh, grave, where is your victory? He said we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trouble, I'm going to tell you something that stirs a hunger in me, that stirs an excitement in me to think that one of these days, amen, we don't know the day and we don't know the hour. Hour, but Jesus will come back uh, and we'll say goodbye to our problems. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye to our pain. Goodbye to our sorrow. 
Thank God the devil's fighting me with my throat, but I'm going to preach anyway. Amen. Goodbye to sorrow. Goodbye to sickness. Never again to hear an unkind word to break your heart and make you cry. Never again. Never again to be kicked on and pushed over by the world. No, no, no. Never again will I preach in a church and people won't even listen and turn their back to me. Come and say amen. Amen, somebody. No, no, no. Never again will you feel a spiritual dark to the enemy while you're trying to do God's work. Come on, say amen. Amen. No, no, no. Never again. Never again, never again we have to say goodbye to a loved one. Never again we have to get down beside your bedside and with tears of falling out of your eyes, plead for God to save your children. Plead for God to send revival. Oh, God, send rain upon a dry and thirsty land. Oh, never again. Oh, but we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last drop. <laughs> and the Bible said and the Bible said when we see him we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is Amen. when our bodies be glorified like in under the Son of God oh you talking about meeting in the air and God's own Son will be the leading one at the meeting in the air I wonder how many is ready for that meeting How many is ready? How many is ready? Ready or not, the Lord is coming. Ready or not, He's coming again. Will your lamps be trimmed and burning? Ready or not, here He comes. Alcohol won't taste so good then. Fornication won't look so enticing then. Backbiting. Gossip won't be so inviting then. For five seconds after the, that time comes, there's going to be weeping and wailing. Because there's going to be a few people that had enough sense to know what just happened. But they weren't ready. He said that a lot of people have a head knowledge, but they have no, they have no, they've not been converted. They've not been made right. Well, you tell people about the Lord, well, I know all about that stuff. Yeah, know what about it's one thing, but receiving it is something else. Oh, hallelujah. The sad thing is about that day that's coming. There's going to be many that won't be taken with the Lord. Amen. For the Bible said, we the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are saved, we that are saved, we that know the Lord will be taken. But there's going to be a great multitude of people that were not saved and were not ready. Who, who, who maybe once had walked with God but had turned their back and, and, and became a backslider. Come on now, say amen. amen. Well, there's going to be many people, amen, who won't be ready for that day. Amen. Can you imagine? And when that time comes, uh, well, we think about how it's going to be a glorious time for us. Uh, amen. When the Lord comes and gets us. Uh, but you think about what it's going to be down here on this earth. Uh, amen. The turmoil and the strife. Uh, when God takes the church out of here. Uh, well, amen, America, no wonder. Amen. You don't read of the United States of America in the entire prophecy. Why? Because uh, I believe this. Because the church of Jesus Christ uh, is the only force holding this nation together. Amen. We're gone by by country because we're gone. Oh, what a wonderful time that's going to be for us. Amen. Yeah. But what a sorrowful time. I'm preaching the best I can with, the, with my help. I'll tell you something. It's going to be a horrible time. It's going to be a horrible time when I think about the churches, the people in churches who thought they were ready, who thought that everything was forgiven. They were a member of a church. They held position in church. They paid their tithes. Amen. They, they dressed up all good on Sunday morning. And they thought, well, because I've been raised in church all my life, surely that means I'm saved. I listen here, I cut my teeth on the church pew. Amen. Amen, somebody. I cut my teeth on the church pew. I, I, I'd get up and try to preach when I was about two or three years. 
years old. Amen. The preacher, I'd go in behind the preacher. And he'd kick his leg. I'd kick mine too. It didn't go too high, but I tried. I'm going to tell you something. Even though I was innocent, even though I was pure, I was born in sin just like anybody else was. And I still had to be born again. Well, but when I was seven years old, I walked to the altar. Yeah. A little boy and said, Jesus, yeah. I didn't know all the words. I didn't, I didn't have all the emotion, but I had faith. I had faith. And I said, Jesus, save me. And guess what he did? Yeah. He did, and now I'm saved. How many people, how many churches, if the Lord would come on a Sunday, and I wonder how many churches, how many people will still be sitting in pews? I'm not talking about dope hacks. I'm not talking about drunks and adulterers. I'm talking about people who just didn't go all the way. I'm talking about people who thought, I can make it on my own. If I do good, I'm a, I'm a good man. I, I, I don't beat my wife, I love her. I only beat my kids occasionally. Only when they need it. And I believe some kids do need an occasional beating. Come on, say amen. 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 I don't believe that. I do. I mean, what's wrong with this generation? They don't know how to bring the belt out. They don't know how to bring the paddle out. If it was good enough for me. It's good enough for this young generation. Too. You don't believe that? Well, if you read the book of Proverbs, he'll tell you exactly what you do. He said you beat your child with a rod. It won't die. Amen. amen. That's the way I was raised, and that's the way I'm going to raise my young ones. I don't care if the nation don't like it. The nation will think parents that know how to raise their young ones and, and, and discipline their children because what you're doing, you're keeping your children out of jail, and you Amen. could be keeping your children out of the very gates of hell because you're raising right. Amen. Amen. I don't mean to get off on that. How many people sit in church pews? I was good. I was faithful. But you wasn't saved. You never come to a place where you say, God, I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I need to be saved. My sins, my sins are, are great, but Lord, you can forgive them. You can, though my he said, he said, well, come let us reason together. He said, though your sins, though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be white as wool. Though, you, but though they'll be red like crimson, they'll be white as snow. Oh, that's what the Lord said. The Lord wants to save you. The Lord wants to wash you clean. Well, there's so many people who say, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to get up in front of people. I don't want to go down and make a fool of myself. Uh, amen. The cause of fear of other people. Uh, the fear of other people has kept us, uh, has kept us <laughs> from doing great places in God, uh, has kept you from doing what God wanted you to do. Uh, oh, you hear me now, people. It don't matter what God thinks about you, uh, for when you stand before your God on judgment day, uh, amen. Oh, even all the world won't matter to you. Uh, but when that, that, when that God uh, who sits on that throne looks down at you, uh, oh, you're going to tremble and you're going to shake and say, why did I listen to the preacher? Why did I take heed? What I want to say. And the Lord comes there in church, but they're still left by. I wonder how many preachers <coughs> still be preaching when the Lord comes. Preachers who may have once right with God. Maybe had a calling on their life or maybe not. Maybe their mama called and daddy sent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. But maybe let's say that we're called of God. <laughs> but they sold to the world. Yes. They went the ways of the world. What kind of a preacher? Heard on the radio, and I will not quote what this preacher said. I didn't think he should. It was the vulgarity of it. About a preacher who encouraged. I won't say what he said exactly, but I'll say the gift. He encouraged this couple. Go ahead and get together. Go ahead and get together. You got to try living together first. 
A preacher. Ain't no preacher. Amen. Come on, how many mamas and daddies who how want how well, I'm gonna gobble step on some toes right now, but I really don't care. How many mamas and daddies open the door and say, You can shack up in my house? I can't imagine that. But as we pat it on the back, I will tell you something. There's a reckoning day coming. You better get right. I didn't come to you pat me on the back. I don't care if you even like me. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. There's going to be mamas and daddies who stand and though they may be saved, but they're going to watch their children burn and those in God send them to the gates of hell. Why? Because they didn't do their part. They didn't raise them right. They didn't keep them in church. Well, come on now, somebody. I, had, I, I sat down with, with a couple. I dedicated their baby to the Lord. I wonder how many dedications are done in vain. <laughs> well, we want the show. <clears throat> I'll tell you something better. Never dedicate a child unless you intend with every father you're being to raise that child up in the house of God. Hey, Amen. Dedication is not just some, just some go through the motions. Uh, no, no, no. A dedicating a child to God uh, is saying, God, I'm going to raise this child up for you. Uh, if you'll bless this child, uh, I'll, I'll give him to you completely. And I sat down with a couple. Hey, man, I dedicated their child. Uh, and they were having problems and difficulty after giving difficulty. It got to burning in me so bad. Uh, I sat down and I said, well, talk, let's talk. Uh, I said, I sat across the table for them. Uh, I'm going, that's kind of bold. Well, you've got to be bold if you want to be a preacher. Uh, I didn't tell them, come on now. Uh, I'm not a hireling. Amen. Those churches don't pay you enough to be a hireling. I'm not a hireling. I'm a preacher. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's different. Amen. I said that and I said, you listen here. I said the reason why you're having the problems you're having, the reason why nothing ain't going right with you, you made a vow to God you're not keeping it because they were laying out of church. They were drinking. They weren't doing right. They were love. They were backsliding on God. I said until you repent and get back right with God, it ain't going to happen. In fact, I'm going to pray it gets worse until you get right. Come on, say amen. Amen. She's received the two good that daddy did. He got up stormed off. You know what? I really didn't care. He said, well, I had come back and he accepted what I said. He said, well, if I didn't like it, I'd have told you. And I said, I really wouldn't have cared anyway. I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen. Amen. Preachers who watered down the gospel, who watered down the message, uh, not to offend a certain type pair of the church. Uh, well, we don't want to offend them. They give this much money to the church. Uh, amen. Who care? Who gives a hill of beans? Uh, I don't care. I don't know how much you give. Uh, I don't want to know. It ain't none of my business. Uh, I will tell you, so I don't care how much money you give to this church. Uh, if you start living in sin, uh, I'll preach on you like I will anybody else. Uh, I don't care what your last name is. God called me to preach. Yeah. I will do. Boys and preach like a wild man. That's what we need. Is more wild men who get out in the wilderness and be a voice crying in the wilderness saying, prepare you the way of the Lord. Amen. If I had the voice, I'd preach it harder. Preachers who didn't preach what God said they were men pleasers and not God pleasers. Most prophets of old we're not very well like people. When you had a good king, the prophet was treated just right. But a wicked king, Jeremiah said, the enemy's coming, you better get right. But they despised not the prophet's word, but God's words. They misused God's prophets like churches are doing to God's preachers yes. now. Amen. And the Bible said, until they... They brought God's wrath so strong upon them. The, the prophet used this word. It was without remedy. They went too far. And God sent judgment. Preachers who won't stand and preach what God said. And how God said preach it. You preach on this. Well, I don't know about that, Lord. I, I just don't know about that, Lord. And I, they won't like me too good. Well, if you're really a man of God, not many people's going to like you. Amen. The Bible said friendship with the world is enmity with God. Amen. He called you to come from among them and be ye separate, serve the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive it. Can I go on? I lost about half of the congregation out anyway. 
The Lord's coming is going to be wonderful to the saved. It's going to be horrible to the lost. I wonder even in this church, in this church, I wonder, and I think, as I was studying last late, last or early, early this morning, hey man, I was I was praying, I was studying, asking God what to say tonight. And this come to my mind, how many of the people, maybe even in this church, I thought you were saved. I called you my brother or my sister. Maybe you were a member of this church. and you, Maybe you look like you have a good testimony. You looked the part. Amen. But the Lord would come and you'd be left behind because your heart wasn't exactly right with God. Not saying we're all perfect. No. No, we all have our faults and failures. But our heart's got to be right with God. we got to have a pure heart. We gotta have a pure heart before the Lord. And I didn't pray for you because I thought you were ready to go. Oh, it's a scary thought. Oh, I'm gonna tell you something about everybody who calls themselves a Christian is really a Christian. Amen. You can tithe and you can give and you can be you can be a participator of the church. But if you're not right with God, if you're lost, amen, you've never been saved, or if you're a backslider on God, it's it's time to get serious with your soul. It's time to get serious. Yes. Get on the altar and get right. Yes. Time to put away the games. Yes. Put away the games. Put away the storytelling. Yes. Time to get on the altar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something else. It's time to get serious about it. It's time to get serious about the laws. Yes. Yes. I was at McDonald's the other week. There's a man sitting there. I, I don't know if he's a preacher or not. Anyway, I was sitting there talking, Selena and Sink or something about the Bible. He must have overheard. Anyway, I come back to the table and he said, something about the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. And you know, I told him, I said, I'd be all right if you'd come tonight. He's made this statement. He said, yes, I am too, but what a sad it would be for the lost. Amen. Because I've got loved ones that are lost. I've got loved ones that are lost without God. And then I know if the Lord would come, if the Lord would come, they wouldn't be ready. They wouldn't go. They, they hadn't made the reservations right. They love this world, the things that are in this world. And, and they don't love God. They don't want a thing to do with God. Yeah, they'll call you when they need prayer. But, but when they pray and, and when they get their help, that they're long gone down the road. See you later, alligator. Amen. I'm not going to stay there. I'm not going to really serve God. I'll tell you, there's a lot of people like that. They'll come to church to see what help they can get. God. I'm just saying the truth. They'll come to church and get, oh, I got, I got a sickness. Would you pray for me? And they'll get real religious. Amen. For a little while, but when they get what they want, then they're on their merry way to care about the church and about God. I couldn't tell you God's sick and tired of people using him like a spare tire. Come on now. It's time we either get in or we get out and we'll get run over. Let me finish. It's time, I wonder, if we will really get serious about our lost loved ones and, and get down to pray and get down to pray for our loved ones. I don't mean this little pity pat prayer. Hey, man, well, I pray, but I just don't know what to pray for. My goodness, uh, open your eyes and look at the world you're living in. Uh, we got brothers and sisters in Christ being beheaded right this very day uh, for the gospel's sake. Uh, hey, man, somebody, uh, we've got people up in, we got people, uh, hey, man, they may not be our same, our same skin color. They may not speak with our same accent, uh, but they're still our brothers and our sisters in Christ. Uh, amen, somebody. It's time we pray. Uh, it's time we get right with God. Uh, it's time we pray for the lost. And if we pray for our loved ones, and I mean seriously, what, what, what a revival of lost people getting saved would we see? We'd see our loved ones get in and really get saved. I mean, not getting on the altar and getting up and nothing's changed. I'm talking about really getting born again and get full of the Holy Ghost and get right with God. Oh, what a revival we'd see. But we're too preoccupied to pray. Looking forward to this revival this week. Yes. Amen. Amen. I wonder how many is going to be faithful. Yes. 
I wonder how, who, how many don't really care. You want to raise your hand? I just, I already said it, can't take it back. It's time we get serious. Amen. Time we get serious. Let me finish. It's been good tonight. It's been true tonight. Ready to get down to business with God. It's time we get back to fulfilling the Great Commission. Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. No man knows the day or the hour of the coming of the Lord. But he did tell us one thing, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Watching is not looking up into the sky. Watching is getting down on our knees. Watching is getting our hearts right with God. Amen. Watching is keeping our all on the altar and never, never get, let anything get in between you and God, but always surrendering everything. Watching is praying for your loved ones to get in. Watching is doing your part in the kingdom of God, whatever, he's, whatever that part is. There's no small part in the kingdom of God. For even as Paul would say, even the unseemly parts of the body are necessary. Do your part. For he's coming. He's coming back. He's coming back. And if only if there would be one person in this building tonight that would just get woke up and see the reality of this. Amen. And see that I, see that and feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost. And I'm not saying you're lost, but I'm saying, is your all on the altar? Is your all on the altar? How many people, when it comes to church time, well, I think I'll go somewhere else and not come to church. Well, I've got this to do and I've got that to do. I've, spring is coming and I've got to get out and I've got to shop. I've got to i got to go on vacation, and then that's all fine in its place. But are you faithful? Can you say, when I ask you, are you faithful, can you say, yes, I'm faithful? Yes, yes I'm faithful. Get right with God. Stay on the altar. When He comes, you will not be, you will not be unaware, but you'll be ready for the time. We're living in a day, and I'm closing. We're living in a day when people are watching and, and very, very carefully watching for the mark of the beast. They don't like when you go to a, a, a counter. I don't know how many can identify with this. I don't, I'm not like this, but I live around people that are. When if the number that you buy at the store comes to six dollars and sixty-six cents, you'll put an extra penny and just. Get away from that number. There's some people that do that, don't they? You ain't got to raise your hand. There's the same kind of people who won't walk under a ladder, who have a feeling they break a mirror. <laughs> I'm not talking about nobody in this church. I'm just saying. They are so superstitious. It has nothing to do with God. But they're looking for the mark. It was once said that a former president... People thought he was the Antichrist because that when his full name, each each uh, name had six letters, and and when it come up to six six six, and they thought, well, this is the Antichrist. But that man is dead, so he could not be the Antichrist. They're looking for the mark, and they're wondering, is the Antichrist alive today? He could be. I don't know. But I'm not looking for a mark. And I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for Jesus. Yeah. Amen. I'm looking for Jesus. You say, well, well, I, I, aren't you afraid you'll be deceived? No. Because God, when I got saved, gave me a compass called the Holy Ghost. And not even just, and I'll tell you something, if they, if, I ain't going to be deceived because I got somebody in me that leads me and guides me and keeps me in the way that I should go. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm not looking for the mark of the beast. I'm looking for Jesus. Amen. And, I, and Jesus said for you to watch for him too. So do I believe, as some would ask me, do you believe he's coming before the tribulation to get his church? 
Some people don't believe that. Some people believe it'll all happen at the end of time. Some people do not believe in the resurrection as we would call it in the scripture. Some people don't believe it, but since I'm preaching, I'm going to tell you what I believe. Yes, he is. And I believe he's getting the church out of here. Why do I believe that? You don't have to believe that to be saved. But I believe I'm right. Why? Luke 21, 36. Let's all turn there. Luke 21, 36. Luke 21. Luke chapter 21. In talking about the end of time and the things that will happen and come upon this earth. This is what Jesus said. Verse 36. If you're there, say amen. Amen. <coughs> Luke 21, 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always. What? That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to do what? And to stand before the Son of Man. I want to tell you while the world is rolling and rocking, while the heavens are being rolled up like a scroll, the stars are falling and the mountains are trembling, and, and people are going crazy calling for the rocks and the hills to fall upon them and to take their life. I believe the church of Jesus Christ will be standing before the very Son of God and whose name is Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, the King of all kings, and the Lord of all lords. His name is Jesus Christ. I believe before, before the Antichrist makes an appearance, I believe before the tribulation starts, I could be wrong. I don't think I am. But I believe the trumpet of God will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised and we're going to go with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Come on, give the Lord your hand to praise Amen. 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 I believe He's coming back. I believe He's coming back. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you watching? And are you waiting? The song said just any day now our Lord is coming. I've been watching and I've been waiting just any day now. His face I'll see. The Lord would come tonight, right this very moment. Is your all on the altar? Right? There's a song I just heard not that long ago, but I believe it's in the hymn book. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice? Is your all on the altar of sacrifice? Another song in the hymn book, I Surrender All. I'm not saying that you'll be left behind if not everything's perfect because we're not saved by law or works, we're saved by grace. Grace, we're saved. 